is going on this is Altona and welcome to another absolutely fantastic day so today I want to share with you a basic walkthrough especially for beginners on how to upgrade your TX 16 s to to the latest essentially the, the latest firmware and that's what we're gonna do today they did a new release recently and that release was the C February the 13th they did another release and now we're at 2.9.4 and I wanted to share that with you. There could be some changes in the future if enough questions are asked and we have updates in the future with future versions of Edge TX then I may consider doing additional videos. So with all that being said let's get into the update of the review. So the very first thing the very first step that I'm going to suggest that you do is go ahead and charge up your battery. Now if you have the tx 16 s the same way that i do you can simply just plug into your usb-c in the bottom and charge the battery up um, it, but if you don't you can always take it out and plug your lipo battery which i have in here into your lipo battery charger um, and go ahead and charge it up so that it is fully charged before you get ready to do the upgrade the last thing you want is to have your battery kind of low and you not realize it and it shut off in the middle of the firmware update you just don't want that to happen because if it does it bricks your, it bricks your radio and then this video will not help you at all <laughs> you're going to have totally different steps that you're going to have to go through in order to recover your radio so the second thing you're going to do is you're going to turn the radio on and you're going to plug your USB-C cable into your computer. Once you do so on the front screen, you're going to be asked a question on how you want to use your radio. At that point, you're going to choose USB storage. You should see two folders pop up on your desktop. One might be untitled and the other one may say Radio Master or, or may say um, TX, TX16S. You're going to close out the TX16S folder and keep up the untitled folder so that you can actually access it because that's the folder we're going to be working in. And of course, what you're going to do here is you're going to back up all of your contents. So create a file folder somewhere on your machine and I would suggest creating one in a permanent place where you plan on storing the backups to your radio and then just select and drag over all of your SD card contents on into that folder now you can if you want to if you fully charge your battery go ahead and leave your radio connected or you can go ahead and disconnect it at this point and turn it off because we're not going to be doing anything in the radio right now we're going to be downloading all of the software and firmware and whatnot that you need to update this radio so at this point like i said make your choice you can turn it off save your battery power and set the radio to the side and we're going to start going to the appropriate website and downloading the documentation that we need. Now from the GitHub Edge TX page, you're going to go to the top of the page where it may actually, as you see on the screen, say that it has a, a, a new release. And you'll click on that release. If not, you can just scroll down the page and look for most recent release. Once you click on release notes for the version that you'd like to download, because you can download a different version if you want to, you're welcome to, or I suggest that you do, read through all of the documentation that they have provided there, just to get an idea, an overview of what they've done, what changes have been made, and all that kind of stuff. The other thing that I absolutely suggest that you do is, if you haven't already, bookmark the edgetx.org webpage and go back to it and revisit it and really read through what kind of information they have there because much of that is going to answer questions for you. They, they could possibly even help you through issues or problems that you're having, um, let you know of some, some bugs that they're working on fixing, so many different things. So you want to make sure that you bookmark this page and go, come back to it and read through it. Once you've read through the information, scroll down to Assets and click on HTX Companion and download the new version for the computer system that you're using. For me, it's a Mac, but they do have a version for PC as well as for Linux. Then you're going to go back to the main HTX page by clicking HTX at the top of the screen, scroll down to Repositories, and then click HTX SD card. At this point, you want to make a note of the appropriate file for your radio. Mine happens to be C408 times 272, which is essentially the dimensions of the color screen on 
the TX16S. Then scroll down to preparing your SD card and click the releases page. From there you're going to look for that same file name and download the appropriate file. And then you can go back to the top of the page and click Edge TX at the top and scroll down to repositories and look for themes. You can scroll down the README section and look for the download, but there's also a theme creator and Photoshop template. And of course, I'm going to be checking those out in the future. But just go ahead and download the appropriate themes folder as well. Now, if you have all of these downloaded, I'll suggest putting everything into a single folder on your desktop where you can easily get to it. You can make a backup of all of these files if you decide you want to, but you don't have to. Because once you update your radio and it's working properly, you really don't need that ba a backup of those downloads. You can always come back to the GitHub to get another copy if you need to. Now you're going to go into that folder that you just created and put all of the zip files there. And then you're just going to go ahead and unzip them all. And then I take the original zip files and I go ahead and drop them in the trash. Now, as you go through the steps of moving content to the SD card on the Radio Master, what you're possibly going to want to do is delete those folders as you get them done. That way you're not confused of whether or not you got them completed or not. You don't have to, but since you've downloaded, I suggest going ahead and installing Companion on your machine. Now, I just went ahead and ran through the installation myself. On a Mac, it's pretty easy. You just click on the file, it opens up, and you just drag the application into your applications folder. And I'll always put a shortcut on my desktop so I can easily get to it. And I've actually gone through and deleted the previous version so it wouldn't be any confusion or interference with what I'm actually currently trying to do. Now, opening Companion can be a little interesting. On my machine, it won't open. My Mac OS doesn't tend to like it, but you can get around that pretty easily just by right clicking on it and then choosing open. After you do it the first time, it should remember that and not continue to give you a problem with it in the future. I'm not going to go into companion in this video, but it is a great tool and I will be going into companion in a future video. Now, now that we've done all that, I'm believe it or not, we're just about done. This is not a really long process, but it is quite a few steps and you want to follow them as best as you possibly can. So what you're going to want to do right now is we're going to move these files over to the SD card. If you disconnected your radio, you're going to reconnect it just by uh, turning on your radio, of course, and putting your USB-C um, cable in the top and then going ahead and selecting SD card so that those folders pop back up again. And again, we're going to be looking at the untitled folder. Mine just happens to be named Excalibur because I renamed my folder because that's the name of my radio. So we're going to start by copying over the firmware file and you're going to want to just open up the firmware folder and find the correct file for the TX16S. In this case, that file name is TX16S77884B6BIN. And just make sure that you choose the right file for your radio because again, if you try to flash the wrong file, it's a possibility that you could brick your radio and then you're going to be in a position where you this video again is not going to help you and you're going to have to work out the steps that's necessary in order to get the radio back up and running. Bricking your radio doesn't kill the radio. It still will work because it doesn't do anything to the hardware. You just have to get the correct firmware back on the radio so it performs properly. And it's really not that big of a deal. It can be done. I can't tell you how to do it off the top of my head, but there's many, many people out there who's already shared how to do that. And so there's a ton of instruction out there on how to get that done. Now the SD card contents folder, you're going to want to open that up. And again, that one is the C480X272. Now, what I actually did as I was copying this over, some of those folders don't have a lot in them because they, didn't, they haven't updated anything for those particular things. So what I actually did was I went to each folder individually. If there was contents in that folder, I copied those contents over. On my Mac, it asked me, do I want to... Um, uh, overwrite the files, what do I want to do? I chose to merge the files. So essentially merging should give you the newest or up, most updated information. The only files they've added in many of those folders are files they've actually done updates to. So if you overwrite them, 
it's a possibility you could wipe out some files that you actually want there. But you just want to make sure or just kind of go through and see what the latest of each one of these are. But if you have a brand new radio, it's a good possibility that you really don't have to worry about much. Um, just copy over anything that's added and keep moving from there. Now, I personally even took time because I've, I've got some model photos and even my splash screen photo, I actually moved over and named it splash. I took the original splash screen file and added a number to it so that it would use my original one. And once I start this guy up to verify the firmware, you're going to notice that the splash screen has actually changed to my personal splash screen. I'm going to be changing that screen. I want it different on this radio than it is on my T18. So just be aware that I'm going to be doing a video on how to do that in the future. It's really extremely simple. We have not actually updated the radio as of yet. All we've done is copied all the SD card contents over to the file folder. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, come to the radio, disconnect it from the computer and actually start it up in bootloader mode. And from there, we're going to go ahead and flash the radio. So let's go ahead and do that. So in order to put this guy in bootloader mode, what you're going to do is you have your T1 and T4 trim buttons here on the bottom of the radio. What you're gonna do is you're gonna push them together toward each other, toward the center of the radio, and then push or hold down your power button. The radio is gonna to start to come on. You can release them and it will put you in bootloader mode. You're gonna have a couple of options on the screen. One of them is write firmware. So you can just use your scroll wheel, make sure that write firmware is highlighted and then click on the write firmware. And now you're going to go through that nice long list of firmware, which you may notice if you've done any firmware updates in the past, there's a list, a very long list of firmware updates. If you click on the wrong thing, it will let you know that it is not a, an appropriate firmware update file. If you click on an older firmware update, it will show you the actual firmware update information because I have 2.9.3 firmware update here on the SD card on my radio. And if, if you do click on the wrong thing, hit your re return key, it'll take you back to, to the list, and then you can scroll down and find 2.9.4, as I have here, and tap on that. And there you will let the firmware install. It really only takes a couple of seconds. The one thing you don't want to do is you do not want to turn the radio off or interrupt the radio as it's actually doing its firmware update. I'm not sure what would cause it to take a little bit longer, but just be patient. If it is taking a little bit longer, just let it do its thing and let it finish on its own. It will let you know that the firmware has been updated and it will take you back to your original splash screen. And now what we want to do is verify that we have the appropriate firmware on, on the radio. So what we're going to do is tap the sys key and then we're going to page over or use the touch screen to go to the information version page. And if you look down, now it says Edge TX, TX16S version 2.9.4 Providence. And then the date, and that date is the date that this firmware was released. And of course, 2.9.4 was actually released on February the 12th of 2024 and the time that it was actually released. So there you go. That is it. It is pretty much done. Well, one thing we have not done as of yet is we haven't changed our background screen here. Um, I have in a previous video showed you using one of the themes, how to set the themes up. There's also a theme builder on the Edge TX website, which I'm going to be checking that out. I'm definitely going to be checking that out so I can build out my theme myself. And, uh, and they even have the show the ability for you to be able to upload your theme to the Edge TX GitHub so people can use it. So I hope that this actually helped you out in some way. I uh, hope that you've gotten something out of it. Again, I am not an expert when it comes to Edge TX, but I'm really learning how to do this. And really what I'm here to do is encourage you that if I can figure these things out and I can do them, then you can too. It's really not that hard. It's just a matter of following instructions and reading through information and, and understanding that information. And uh, that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today. I really, truly appreciate you. Have an absolutely fantastic day and I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon.
Nice. Nice pass. This is so good. <laughs>